Hello everyone, this is Alex. In this video, I am going to teach you a very interesting and a new topic that is a plasma paresis or a plasma exchange. So what is this? What is a plasma paresis and why it is required, when it is required and how it is done and what are the uh, things to be known before the doing this procedure. So all those things I am going to explain you in a brief. So what is plasma paresis? Let me tell you. So what is plasma paresis? So it is a process of separating. It is a process of separating plasma from your blood. It is a process of separating plasma from your blood and returning the blood cells to your body. What is it? A simple thing. So if you take our whole blood, in a whole blood, so blood is a consisting of plasma and cells. Okay. What are the cells? RBCs, WBCs and platelets. In a whole blood, what is the what is the composition? Plasma is consisting of 55% remaining 45 percent is about all these cells okay so in these cells rbc's wbc's platelets everything will be there so we are separating the plasma here in a plasma paresis what is happening we are separating the plasma okay and we are replacing replacing the only blood cells to the again body okay and we are discarding we are going to discard this plasma okay so why what is the need what is the uh, purpose okay all those things we will discuss so what is plasma paresis is a process of separating plasma from your blood and returning the blood cells to your body okay that is the definition next why it is required okay it is performed especially to remove antibodies antibodies in treating autoimmune conditions okay mainly to remove the antibodies in treating autoimmune conditions okay so these antibodies will present in the plasma okay in the blood plasma antibodies will present so in a conditions like autoimmune diseases we are going to remove the antibodies okay that is the main reason okay to perform plasma phases or plasma exchange and next and who needs this plasma paresis? It needs uh, to treat autoimmune diseases and to toxins in the blood. It means to eliminate eliminate the toxins in the blood. And in, in the cases like neurological diseases and very high level of cholesterol that don't lower with medications or dietary changes. And there are other causes also. Uh, management of multiple sclerosis and a second line therapy affect systemic corticosteroids and CNS demyelinating diseases. So these are the all conditions required plasma paresis. Okay, plasma paresis required in all these conditions. And next, so uh, before uh, procedure, uh, what are all the things to be kept in mind? Are the what are the things to be kept ready? Okay. I will just list down the uh, listed down some of the main points. So all those things to be kept ready. Okay, request from a doctor. First, you need a request from a doctor for the patient and get the consent signed by the attender. Okay, so that is very very important. Consent signed and request from a doctor is very important. And next, kit and consumables required for the procedure is also very important. So you need to keep it ready at the bedside, uh, consumables and kit. Next point is patient venous access, check at bedside and renal output also should be assessed. Whether the output is there or not, it should be assessed. Okay. Venous access also should be there before procedure only have to check. And patient lab parameters are very, very important. Uh, you need to get the all patient uh, lab parameters like hemogram rft lft ionized calcium 
okay that is in a pre operate to it should be more than 0. m 0. 0.8 millimoles per liter okay and next uh, next thing to be uh, check patient blood group and availability of cross matched prbcs and ffps also okay required ffps also so you, you need to get ready with the blood group of the patient and cross matched prbcs also uh, should be kept ready before the procedures along with the ffps fresh frozen plasmas also kept ready and emergency intubation kit available and cardiac monitor status also uh, checked okay intubation is always uh, you keep the emergency intubation kit at the bedside this is also very very important next thing you need to check for the whether the central oxygen supply is there or not and suction is working or not okay this is also very very important before doing uh, procedure you need to check all these things uh, next next you have to check for the emergency drugs like keep injection adrenaline atropine avil hydrocortisone and calcium gluconate available so calcium is very very important already i told you uh, we discussed so ionized calcium levels should be checked before procedure and keep calcium gluconate at the bedside okay calcium gluconate should be uh, give with the replacement fluid also sometimes okay so emergency drugs like adrenaline atropine neville hydrocortisone also kept ready at the bedside with the loaded and replacement fluids also decided and kept ready mostly like uh, injection albumin will be there albumin albumin five uh, percent okay five percent albumin to be diluted and kept ready albu human albumin to be kept ready and uh, tpe forms and worksheets made available so these are the checklist points okay yeah you should have all these uh, things at the bedside before procedure okay uh, you need to have a checklist and it should be uh, signed get it uh, done and signed by the doctor and nurse also okay that is the checklist point next what next how the procedure is going to be done so it is a rem blood is removed through an iv line okay in the arm or in a, even in the femoral area also goes through the machine where the plasma is replaced and then it is returned to the body through an another iv line so this is a process so what is happening blood is removed from an iv line so like this this is a diagram so this is a machine okay so entire machine setup will be like this so from a patient from a patient blood is coming like this from a venous okay blood pump will be there and this is a centrifuge in the machine like here centrifugation will be taking place then it here separation of the blood separation of the blood from a plasma is taking place so plasma is collected in a separate um, bags and the uh, remaining red blood cells uh, wpcs all these things blood cells will be blood products will be separated and it will be again all the blood products will be going to the patient and plasma which is separated plasma is stored in the separate bag okay which is going to be discarded so and if you see the this uh, machine this is a user interface or uh, you can say you can say monitor so this is like acd means uh, anticoagulant uh, uh, solution will be there and uh, discarded plasma bag is there replacement fluid replacement fluid with a five percent albumin is there and pumping setup everything will be there Ro centrifuge these are the parts of the uh, machine okay so this is about this is the process how they are um, we are going to take the blood from the patient okay separation from the blood to uh, blood to the plasma and replacing the blood products to the patient okay the collected plasma is going to be discarded that is the process and uh, we are giving only uh, blood products so that we have to give the uh, dilution part also that's why we are giving replacement fluid with a five percent albumin mostly and sometimes we will give a calcium gluconate also this is the 
process they, they more, mainly this, this is happening in the trans uh, means uh, plasmapheresis okay this is a flow chart how it is happening from a patient blood is going and uh, uh, separating okay plasma is going in a different way and uh, blood cells or products is going to the patient bag that is the process okay next so during procedure you need to watch for uh, some of the things you need to watch for uh, uh, main a hypotension and ecg changes so uh, you need to watch in a cardiac monitor watch for hypotension and ecg changes in the ecg wave so because we are removing entire blood from the patient body so definitely there will be a hypotension and some of the ecg changes also takes place so mainly side effects like low bp will be there okay and some dizziness will be there okay patient uh, looks dizzy uh, dry, uh, drowsy okay and feeling cold and tingling sensation in the fingers also will be there and after the procedure also you need to observe for uh, nausea vomiting and drowsiness and uh, co coldness in the uh, to entire body blurred vision for a brief period will be there so these are the some of the uh, things to be observed okay that's all about the plasma paresis procedure and what are the things uh, to be uh, kept ready before procedure and what is uh, plasma paresis why it is required who it is required how it, how the process is taking place that's all for today thank you so much